Hey everyone, so title update 4 came out a few days ago and with it came out two new monsters, two new armor sets and one new weapon. So we're gonna talk about that today. So first off we're gonna take a look at the new armors because they have a new skill we need to talk about and then we're gonna take a look at the meta builds for title update 4. So first off let's talk about the Velkana gear. Her bow is the new best ice spread bow. It has a lot more row than the Barioth bow, but it also has a little less element and Barioth has 30% affinity while Velcana has no affinity. Uh, so this bow is a slight upgrade for the ice spread bow. So let's talk about the new skill Frostcraft, which is actually a returning skill from World. This skill was very good for specific weapons in World and it looks to be the same in Rise. The way it works is that you have a Frostcraft bar that fills up when you shift your weapon and when you attack with your weapon, the bar is going to decrease. The more your bar is filled up, the more damage bonus you receive. The damage bonus is pretty crazy, it gets up to 30% when the bar is full and it goes down to 20% and then 5%. Uh, it's a total damage multiplier, so whatever your damage is, is gonna get multiplied by 30%. That's a huge multiplier. However, in the case of bow, it's not really a great skill to use. First of all, for bow and light bow gun, the damage multiplier for those two weapons only is lower. So instead of being 30% at max level, it's 25%. And instead of 20% at level 2, it's 15%. But the main reason is that you don't really sheath your bow that often. Unless you get a hit, there's no reason during the fight to sheath your bow. On top of that, the three armor pieces that have Frostcraft are not designed for bow at all. They are more aimed towards longsword or greatsword, but not really for bow. Focus, critical draw, and quick sheath is not really something that we're gonna make use of. Also, I have to mention this because if I don't, I'm gonna have a ton of comments. But no, Frostcraft does not make Dragon Piercer good. Back in world, Frostcraft with Fatalis Bow and Dragon Piercer and Critical Draw used to have some matchups where it was viable, but in Rise that's just not the case. First off, Critical Draw does not work with Dragon Piercer. You only have a short amount of time after your draw to do an attack, and Dragon Piercer animation is too slow to benefit from crit draw. But mostly in Rise, we already have Pierce Bows, and Pierce Bows do a ton of damage uh, when Pierce is good. And on top of that, the armor pieces that come with Frostcraft are just horrible for both. So we're gonna move on to the Vastrax gear now. Before we talk about the new skill that is called Dragon Conversion, we're gonna talk about the individual pieces of this armor. So at first glance, it looks like some of these pieces are great for both. The Waste has Stamina Surge 3, Decent Slots, and Attack Boost 1. However, we're not gonna use it because two of the builds I'm gonna show you have infinite stamina and the third build has stamina surge on another piece of equipment. The legs look absolutely crazy and I'm sure a lot of melee weapons are gonna use it, but for bow, again, we're not gonna use them. All of our builds have legs that we just cannot replace. And the same goes for the arms, they look really good, but for bow we have arms that are almost irreplaceable in some builds, and we already have other pieces of equipment that have critical boost too, on the chest and the head. So let's talk about Dragon Conversion, which is the brand new skill from this armor set. First of all, this skill when you're on the blue scroll, after hitting the monster for a while, you're gonna get 15 resistance in all of your resistances. And as far as I'm aware, this is permanent, so unless you die, this is going to stay with you. And the second part of this skill, when you're on the red scroll, all of your elemental resistance is converted to element. What most people have done is that they mix this skill with other skills that gives you a ton of elemental resistance. Dragonheart, when you have low health, gives you 250 elemental resistance, which is huge. And the Furious Raging set bonus also gives you a bunch of resistance, uh, elemental resistance. The issue when it comes to bow is that the conversion rate between melee and ranged is not the same. Melee get 25% of the elemental resistance converted to element, but range is only 8%. And with how heavy you need to invest in this skill to make it work, and with how good the other builds are for bow, it doesn't make sense to use this build with the conversion rate difference between melee and range. So sadly for bow, those two new armors don't really bring anything new to the table. So before we talk about the meta builds for this title update, we're gonna take a look at the new curio skills that are available. The big one that surprised me was Strife, 
but we also have Dragon Heart. Dragon Heart also has a decoration, and we have Powder Mental and Wind Mental. We have Mail of Hellfire, which is pretty crazy, and we have Intrepid Heart and Embolden. Intrepid Heart also has a level 1 decoration now, so I don't suggest you get it on Curio because you can just slot the level 1 and have it. Okay, so let's talk about the meta builds for this update, and there has been almost no changes when it comes to bow. The first build I'm gonna show you is the full Chaos armor set. It has been the most dominant and one of the best bows to come out. It's incredibly strong and it's incredibly comfortable as well. So I strongly suggest you use this build. I will also have a non Berserk build, which in my opinion is a lot less safe, a lot less strong, but I know some people don't like Berserk, so if you really don't want to play with Berserk, that's another option for you. And the last build I'm gonna show you is a Dereliction build. Now this build I was torn on whether I should include it or not, and that's because Dereliction by itself has been completely outclassed by Chaotic Gear. However, it's still used in some cases, but that's very, very niche, so I'm gonna talk about that at the end. Okay, so let's start with the Chaotic Gear. This gear for bow has been completely insane. It's by far the safest, the most comfortable, and the most damage you can get all at once. So there's no reason, in my opinion, to play anything else. If you don't know what this skill does, it has two skills. The first part is Berserk, which when you're on the blue scroll, you're completely immune to damage. When you take damage from a monster, it doesn't affect your health. However, your health will slowly drain all the time. If you get hit by a monster, you won't take any damage, but the drain is going to get faster. I know health drain can sound scary, but by default, with a couple of skills that I'm going to show you, you can completely nullify the health drain. And if you happen to get hit, all you have to do is to switch to the red scroll, heal and go back to the blue scroll, and the drain will be back to normal speed. Without Berserk, bow in high level investigation tends to get one shot by literally every attack. So the fact that Berserk, you can tank one, two, three attack without taking any damage, and all you have to do is heal and go back to blue, is much, much safer than any other build that we have. I'm considering making a video, a guide on how to play Berserk efficiently. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comment and I'll consider making it. The second set bonus of this build is Strife. Strife, when you have red health, gives you bonus affinity and bonus element. And it works very well with Berserk because on the blue scroll with the Berserk, all your health is now red health. So Strife, when you have more than 60% of your health bar as red, so that's gonna be almost all the time with Berserk, you get 20% affinity, 20% element, and mostly infinite stamina. So yes, this build, you get infinite stamina, a ton of damage, and you're literally invulnerable to damage while you're in blue scroll. To nullify the health drain, it will be mandatory to have the Kushala Blessing skill at level 3. At level 3, this skill will give you constant health regeneration. I strongly suggest that you drink an immunizer. Those last for 5 minutes and it will double the rate of health regen from Kushala Blessing. If you are able, you can eat for Dango Super Recovery Level 4. This is not mandatory, but it's a nice bonus if you can afford it. That's it about the Chaotic build. I cannot emphasize enough how strongly I suggest to use this build or the other builds that I'm gonna show you. But in case you don't like Berserk, I have another option for you. This build is a more classic bow build with, without health drain or anything like that. It has some protection. We have Guts, which will prevent you from being one-shot once. And it has Divine Blessing 2, which will reduce damage some of the time and also should prevent a one-shot most of the time. With this build, I recommend to eat for Moxie as well. This should prevent another one-shot, so you have two one-shot protections and you have Divine Blessing 2. Um, on top of that, if you can slot in Intrepid 1, this will give you another layer of protection. So if you don't use Berserk, that's going to be your best bet for a somewhat safe bow build. Okay, so let's talk about the Dereliction build. And this one, I have to warn you, this is going to be a build that most people, 99% of people, should not be using. Dereliction was already a risky build to start with, but now, with Berserk being so good, it's been made completely irrelevant. Outside of speedruns, it is used in speedruns a lot because mixed with Berserk, so it's a Dereliction and Berserk mixed build, it's, it's the most damage you can get, but it's extremely unsafe. 
So that's what the build looks like and you can see it's very specific. You use 4 piece chaotic and you use devolution legs. And the way you use berserk is different than on the full chaotic gear. You don't use berserk to be invincible, you use berserk to cut your health in half. At the start of the quest, you're going to swap to the blue scroll and swap back to the red scroll like you can see on the screen. And by the time you buff yourself and you get to the monster, with the Reliction Drain, most of your health is going to be red health. This will proc Strife 3, which as a reminder gives you 20% affinity, 20% element, and infinite stamina. So it's basically a Reliction build with infinite stamina and a bunch of elemental damage on top of that. And since we're gonna have low health all the time, we're also gonna have Heroics, which is a 30% damage boost. So you're gonna have infinite stamina, 20% element, 20% affinity from strife, and 30% damage boost from Eric. So the setup is very easy. All you have to do is swap to your blue scroll and swap back to the red scroll at the beginning of the quest, and that's it. So because we want to stay at low health, you will need to remove bloodlust from your arms, because bloodlust otherwise will heal you and mess up the whole build. Also, with Kyoyo, you want to add affinity, so either weakness exploit or maximum might, up to you, uh, one of the two. You want to remove all healing sources, so if you have buddies, do not use healing cats, and if you use followers, do not use followers that can heal you. So Utsushi is a really good follower that doesn't heal you, and any other follower that doesn't heal you is also good. Once again, I don't recommend using this build, you will get one shot by absolutely anything, small monster, flinch, anything. Only use this build if you want to mess around with a monster that you know very well, or if you want to start speedrunning. That's it about the builds. As far as bows are concerned, here's a picture of all the meta bows per shot type. Uh, nothing has changed, the only thing that changed is now the ice spread bow is the Velcana bow. That's about it. If you have any questions, please let me know as usual, and I'll try to answer it in the comments. See you next time.